We get it. Distractions happen. That's why we designed the fully electric, full-sized Volvo EX90 with the latest technology to keep you and those around you safe. Its two-sensor driver understanding system is designed to prevent distractions and help you stay focused. Reserve your Volvo EX90 today. Learn more at volvocars.com slash US. How do stop losses work on Kraken? Let's say I have a birthday party on Wednesday night, but an important meeting Thursday morning. So sensible me pre-books a taxi for 10 p.m. with alerts. Voila, I won't be getting carried away and staying out till two. That's stop loss orders on Kraken, an easy way to plan ahead. Go to kraken.com and see what crypto can be. Not investment advice. Crypto trading involves risk of loss. Cryptocurrency services are provided to U.S. and U.S. territory customers by Payward Interactive Inc., PWI, DBA Kraken. View PWI's disclosures at kraken.com slash legal slash disclosures. Trump can only watch as his media stake takes a $4 billion dive. X has articles, which they've had, but maybe you didn't know. And I'm going to talk about all the things that suck about being an entrepreneur. Enjoy. What are you calling to me from outside of a dream? Welcome to the Age of Jeremy. My name is Jeremy Quintanilla. If you're new to this podcast, this podcast is all about my adventures through building my businesses. You might know me from such businesses, 3T Warrior Academy, Age of Radio, Q Financial, Geek Collective, Blockheads, the company that brings you Merlin, the smartest way to track your crypto. And that is just to name a few. You can follow me on social media at Age of Jeremy or Age of Jeremy Q. On Twitter, it's Age of Jeremy Q. You can also find me on Facebook at Cesar Jeremy Quintanilla. I needed to do a verification and I needed to do my full name. Uh, Long story, but you should follow me there and you can follow me everywhere. If you do have Snapchat and you want to ask a question for this show, go ahead and Snapchat me and I will answer those questions on the show. I mean, I guess it would be live for me. It wouldn't be live for you. Or if you don't want that question on the show, you can just snap me and I will answer any personal finance questions that you have. You can follow me on Snap at Age of Jeremy. If you're also interested in having a consultation with our insurance agents, there is a link to a form in the episode description and we can talk to you. I can do a free consultation for you, whether it's bookkeeping, insurance, investments, whatever it is. I just want to sit down and see how I can help you and see if there is a way that we can help you. But we do talk a lot about Index Universal Life Insurance and how you can utilize it to protect your wealth. It's all about taking things from the top of the risk pyramid and moving them down to the base. So from going, taking your profits from the, the, the profits that you're making on more risky investments, taking those profits and investing them in things that are more secure, like Index Universal Life Insurance. And maybe Index Universal Life Insurance isn't always going to be the best fit for every single person, but the only way that you can know is if you sit down with us. So go ahead, click the link in the episode description, get some time on my calendar, and we can talk about your financial journey. The other thing that you can go ahead and do is go on over to 3twarrioracademy.com or follow my friend at Coach JV underscore so you can learn about all the cool stuff that we are having at 3T Warrior Academy. And all this stuff is in the episode description. So I guess the crux, the crux of all, I've used that word so many times over the last couple of weeks. The crux of it is go into the episode description and find out about all the cool stuff that we have going on. Or you can follow me on social media. So without further ado, I want to talk about the failure of Trump. So again, you guys may know that I'm not a big fan of Trump. If you, if I told you why I thought that I was not a big fan of Trump, um, you'll probably be like, well, he's crazy. I just can't see a future where he is a leader that doesn't lead us into a worse economy. Um, the economy that we are experiencing now is partly due from him. Um, It's partly due from Biden. I do personally think that Biden has done a decent job or the Biden administration has a decent job of getting our inflation to pull back. Um, Now, that doesn't mean that I think that he was fully not at blame for the inflation getting out of control. But I also think a lot of that has to do with Trump. 
We are still in the Trump tax cut. So if you think that our uh, taxes are horrible right now or that they have gone up, this is the latter end of his tax cuts. And so this was all a part of the tax cuts that he put in or the tax plan that he put into place. So we are experiencing still the Trump era tax laws. Okay. And the other problem with it is I think that him being a strong man, I don't personally think Putin respects that. I don't think um, China respects that. And I think um, that if he gets into office, it would be even more prevalent that we would move down the path to a world conflict um, much faster than if we have a different candidate. That being said, I am not endorsing Kamala Harris. I am not a huge fan of Kamala. I think that having a female president would be fantastic. And I think that she, but I don't think that she would be the best candidate for president. Um, so again, I'm not going to endorse her either. And I'm not endorsing Trump. Um, and I will tell you who I voted for after the election. But my guess is as of right now, it's not going to be either one of them. Now, that being said, I don't like saying doing this article to poke fun at Trump, even though I don't think that he's a good businessman. Um, again, because he's not uh, the paper fortune that former President Donald Trump amassed by taking a nascent media startup public is shriveling. Um, and a race to the exit that begins as soon as September 19th could shrink it even more. My guess is this company goes bankrupt at the end of October. Um, Trump media and technology, maybe later than that. I don't know. They'll probably restructure stuff. They might, they found some other people to buy shares. Another company, I think Vanguard and BlackRock are the two largest shareholders of Trump media now, but Trump media and technology group core, which owns the X lookalike social media platform, true social, which I'm not on because I have no interest in that has shed nearly $6 billion in value over the past four months. Meanwhile, it's largest shareholders have been unable to sell because of a lockup agreement from when the firm went public through a special acquisition company merger, also known as a SPAC, in March. The stock was trading at its lowest since then, as recently as this past Thursday, erasing $4.1 billion in paper wealth for the Republican presidential candidate. If you're not familiar what that means for paper wealth is that when you own stock and you don't have it like essentially liquid or it's in stock. We call that paper wealth. So it goes up with the market. It goes down with the market. And again, not to push the life insurance, but that's the reason why life insurance is beneficial is because you can index something to a marketplace and your principal is protected. But again, you can message me. If you want to learn more about that, you should snap me at age of Jeremy. So it erased 4.1 billion in paper wealth for the presidential candidate. He owns roughly 60% of the company. His stake is now worth about $2.1 billion. And so a co-founder and managing partner of Twin Focus, Paul Carter, says buyers beware. He's watched the fallout for many of these former SPACs, and it was just a race to the bottom where everyone was trying to get out at any price, and the stocks just collapsed. So in September 19th, if it, people are able to pull their money, we could see that continue to collapse as we go into the back end of the year and the company could go under. Um, now, while it is uh, fun for me to point this out because of Trump, just because I am not a fan of Trump, um, now I don't wish him to be assassinated. But if I can point out his flaws and his losses, I would expect someone else to do the same for me if I was touting how amazing that I was. I would want someone to come be like, well, he's not really as amazing as he says. Uh, but the reason why I bring this up is because Trump isn't alone in watching a paper empire collapse because of the lockup restrictions. So essentially, the buyers had lockup restrictions that are going to open up here at the end of the year, and that's when it's probably going to sell. So most of these people, because they're in a lockup, they're watching their wealth dwindle away, right? So this prevents insiders from selling until next week, which this was last Thursday. So this is going to be this week, September 19th. Um, Andy Latinsky and Wes Moss, former contestants on Trump's TV show, The Apprentice, who co-founded the company, and Patrick Orlando, whose fund, Arc Global Investments to LLC, sponsored the SPAC that merged with Trump Media, have been more than five, have seen more than $500 million in wealth wiped out. In 
Investors are bracing for a flurry of sales from Latinsky, Moss, and Orlando, given that none of them have roles at the company, and all have been parties in a smattering of lawsuits surrounding their positions. So they're probably Latinsky, Moss, and Orlando are going to probably pull when this opens up on September 19th. Whether Trump or the other insiders will capitalize on the removal of the lockup as soon as the end of next week, being this Friday, which I believe is September 20th. Um, is unclear, but tr- so essentially whether Trump or the other insiders will capitalize on the removal of the lockup by the end of this week is unclear, but traders will be closely monitoring regular regulatory filings that would show any such sales. As for the former president, he insists he has no plans to dump the shares, which I don't think that he should. And to be honest, while I'm not a huge fan of Trump, I think that there is enough people that would support Truth Social, and I feel that if they could get that media company to increase its revenue, which I'm not necessarily sure is any part of a Trump plan is to increase revenue, I think that they could turn that into something. A lot of people that uh, Trump said this, a lot of people think that I'll sell my shares. Uh, you know, they're worth billions of dollars, but I don't want to sell my shares. I'm not going to sell my shares. I don't need money, and it is great for me. It's a great voice. The stock jumped following those comments last Friday up 12%. Um, So again, who knows, but uh, there could be an exit on this, and that exit of the company's shares should could cause that to fall. But this is one of the things that happens a lot with these SPAC deals. Um, Also, uh, so SPAC is the acronym for Special Purpose Acquisition Company, Uh, and so... Essentially, that's one of the biggest problems uh, and one of the highest risks. But again, when you have high risk, you can sometimes have, you know, great reward or a lot of times the higher the risk, the greater reward if it pays off. We'll be right back after these messages. Enjoy. Earning your degree online doesn't mean you have to go about it alone. At Capella University, we're here to support you when you're ready. From enrollment counselors who get to know you and your goals to academic coaches who can help you form a plan to stay on track. We care about your success and are dedicated to helping you pursue your goals. Going back to school is a big step, but having support at every step of your academic journey can make a big difference. Imagine your future differently at capella.edu. One of the things that I've been working on is increasing my age of Jeremy brand or just my personal brand. Uh, doing more writing, which I talk a lot about on the podcast, um, especially on the Lo-Fi podcast. And one of the things that I want to do is write a lot more articles. Uh, And one of the things that I've been trying to figure out how to do is how I want to go about writing them, getting the time to write them and so forth. And I think that this is a really cool feature. I saw one of my good um, friends or friends on um, X utilize it. Uh, It's the articles function. So if you have an X account, which I think everybody should, even if you're not really big on Elon, if you have a brand, it's a really good place to like get information out there and to share your thoughts, uh, X and threads. I'm a big fan of both of them, but X is a little bit more developed as threads is like, I mean, I guess it's kind of like Twitter was originally, but then it's also part of Instagram. So but like if we look at what Elon and the X team is trying to do uh, for X, they're trying to make it an everything app. And I think they're making a lot of good strides. But one of the things that I really enjoy that they have on here, and this is the social media kind of tip for the week, is I would go and get a premium plus. I haven't started it yet, um, but I want to get a premium plus account and do the articles. So if you subscribe to premium plus, you can write articles on X. And so there's an image that you can put on it. You can create really long form, like longer form written content. Uh, And I think this is a really good thing for media companies too. So I've been thinking a lot about it for age of radio and how we can have other articles that are written by us that just go out on X and we don't have to focus on being on another platform. Now, that being said, you should still really focus on having an email campaign or an email list being generated. You should really focus on getting phone numbers and, and curating that and, and create, making that like a main staple of your business because at any given time, X can go away. TikTok can go away. YouTube can go away. They can change the algorithm. They can change the way the data uh, comes to you. They can do all kinds of stuff. And so when they do that, you want to make sure that you have 
the ability to reach all of your customers. And the only way to do that is to have their phone numbers and their email addresses. And even if you have their addresses, if you can get the address, email address, and phone number, you have the ability to reach out to the, your audience. And that's one of the things that we have gotten, you know, we don't do as much anymore because of the fact that the social media platforms has made it so easy for us to do, uh, for us to, to put the content out there. So I haven't done it yet, but I, you have to subscribe to Premium Plus. And again, with if you don't know about Premium Plus, um, there are some other things. You get everything that you get with Premium. The only thing that's different on it, it looks like, if I remember when I did this, is the articles. Like the only thing that's different from that and Premium is... Okay, so your ads on Premium are half in for you and following. If you have Premium Plus and you run ads, they're full you're fully ad free. So on premium. Okay. So on premium, you get Grok two, you get Grok two on premium plus you get ads half in for you and following. And then ads are fully ad free on premium plus. And then reply boost is the same. And then it looks like everything else is the same, except you can write articles. And the problem with it that I have is that the price, so it's $19.17 a month if you pay for annual and it's billed annually. So it's $229.99 a year. And then it's monthly, it's 22 bucks a month if you do it, if you do it monthly. And so I'm going to probably end up doing this. I just don't want to start paying for it. And I recommend that you have a good strategy in place for writing the content. That's kind of why I haven't pushed it forward is because I don't have a set schedule to sit down and write the articles and then post them. And so until I get that schedule in place to do that, probably not going to do it yet, but I really encourage you to go and look at it and see if that is something that can fit your brand. And also too, trying to think about a strategy for doing that for age of radio and any of, you know, having that longer form article content is a really good way for you to create your business or yourself to be a thought leader in a space. And one of the best ways to be a thought leader in a space is to give your opinions on situations inside of space that you want to be a thought leader in. And doing articles here, I think, is a really good way to do it, um, which is another great place to do it, too, is at LinkedIn. Um, but I think like I have LinkedIn and I'm working on that, but I think that t- X is really known for that type of article or journalistic, you know, distribution. And so having it on X might be much more beneficial. So let me know, snap me, let me know, um, you know, uh, DM me on Instagram. Let me know what you think about the articles. If you start doing it, if you want me to check out and read some of your articles, let me know, but, and then keep an eye out on my X. So go and subscribe to my X at age of Jeremy Q. And I'll be working to push those articles out in the future. So we'll be right back. The great visionary leader of India, Mahatma Gandhi said, it is health that is real wealth and not pieces of gold and silver. Listen to the Healthy Grocer radio show on your favorite podcast platform. We know that health is our greatest wealth and we will be discussing all aspects of natural healing. Explore everything from supplements, superfoods, and healthy lifestyle choices to help conquer stress and boost productivity. Top industry experts and natural health professionals join us for a deep dive into our healing journey. You can find the Healthy Grocer Radio Show on demand every day wherever you listen to your favorite podcasts. And remember, health is your greatest wealth. In the middle of making this episode, my light bulb needed to be changed in my ceiling fan. And I tried to do that. And the bottom part of the bulb got stuck inside of the ceiling fan, like the screw part of, you know, where the the bulb goes. I couldn't get it out. It ended up destroying the ceiling fan. And I have um, now finished working on the podcast now at two o'clock at night. I was going to do it tomorrow, uh, but uh, essentially, I went to go get a light for the room. We decided to use the light from our bedroom, move that light in here. I have a really good light. Actually, I like the lighting better, to be honest. So that's good. And I'm finishing up the podcast now. I had to turn off the circuit breaker. I had to fix, finish that. And then we're going to need to get ceiling fan fixed. And the reason why I'm bringing that up is because it's going to go into what I want to talk about today. And the biggest problem, the the hardest thing about being an entrepreneur is continuing to work after you have setbacks. I 
we started Three Two Warrior Academy in 2017, and it was and still to this day, there is just stuff that happens. I don't necessarily in my in my mind. I think in my mind, I have made it where when all the bad stuff happens and you overcome it, it makes you stronger. It makes you better. It makes you more dedicated. And I still 100 percent believe that. Right. I was going to try to get up early tomorrow and do this, but I'm not really a good early morning person. I'm a better late night person. So I thought that I could go ahead and just do this tonight. Like I said, it's 105 and I'm finally finishing up this episode. And so, so I agree that getting this done is the thing that is the right thing to do. But this type of stuff happens as an entrepreneur. There are things that happen that set you back. And the hardest part about being an entrepreneur that sucks about being an entrepreneur is you have to sacrifice the other things that you want to do so that you can still get the stuff done that you need to get done. Right. My age of Jeremy brand is so important. Getting this content out to you guys is so important. Impacting your lives, giving you guys content, you guys finding something meaningful in this is the reason why I want to do this to continue to grow so that I can bring products and services and innovation out into the community. And if I'm not making this content on a regular basis, trying to make it better, trying to get it to grow, trying to get the content more in depth, then it's just never, it's going to fail. And it's something that I very that I'm very passionate about and part of my overall business and business strategy. So if I'm not doing it, then can I really say that I care about the business, right? Or I care about my brand or I care about moving what I need to move forward. And so I feel that that's the first thing that sucks about business is if it's if it's like Murphy's Law. If it can go wrong, it's gonna go wrong. And the thing that sucks about being an entrepreneur is you have to get over it. You have to have that discipline. It's not motivation. And we talk about that a lot. Motivation's fleeting. Who gives a fuck about motivation? We can go to fucking church camp. We can all give our lives to Jesus. And I'm not trying to be sacrilegious right here. I'm using his example because I went to a lot of church camps when I was growing up before I made the transition to different religious paths. We go to church camp. We find Jesus. We get saved every single time. We cry. We make new friends. We you know, read the gospel. We read the Bible. We were going to, we have all these goals and plans and we go back down the mountain because usually Bible camps are up in a mountain, at least in Arizona, you go back down the mountain and then you have to go back to life and you end up falling off of your religious path. That's the same thing for being a freaking entrepreneur. You, you can't, you, you like, not like the, like, not like that same thing happens. Right. But like you have to, you have to have the discipline to move forward. It's not motivation. Motivate no one get motivation stupid. Motivation is the most ridiculous thing. I'm not motivated right now. As I'm getting into it, I'm getting more excited. It's easier to do the podcast. But when I was doing this, I wasn't fucking motivated to do it. I had to do it because I want to get it out to you guys. And I thought it would be a really good story, right? I thought it would be really good content, really good story for you to see that it, you have to make sacrifices. Like if you have kids right now, and you were doing something with them, you have to put them to bed and then you have to go and put in the work. You have to get really, really good at the discipline. That is the only thing that matters is just doing it. And the only way that you can do that is do a little bit more every single time, talk yourself into it, push yourself more. And then also too, you need to make sure that you rest so that you can recharge. So you don't, you know, drain yourself and then you just don't want to do anything. But at the same time, it's not, it's not something that I wanted to do. I wanted to to do some other stuff. I wanted to relax. I wanted to read, but this is more important. So I made myself do it. That's the number one thing, in my opinion, that sucks about being an entrepreneur is those things are always going to happen. The second thing that sucks about being an entrepreneur is that you're going to be needed by all kinds of people. And again, I love all of the people. If anybody's listening to this, that's on my team that's talking to me right now or listening to, sorry, if you're listening to this right now and you're listening to me talking, I love every single one of you. And in reality, none of you like bothered me, but like I am needed a lot, right? And so when you're needed a lot, that's one of the other things that sucks about being an entrepreneur because you get pulled away from the things that you want to do. And then you have to re refocus on the other things that you have to do because entrepreneurs put out fires. They fix the processes. They get asked the questions because people need to know what it is that you want to do because you're the owner of the business, because you're the one that's driving the vision forward. And so sometimes you get deviated from what you need to do. And then the thing that sucks is you have to deviate yourself back and you have to put in longer hours. There is, I, I am not, I do not subscribe yet 
not saying that it's not going to change one day. As of right now, I do not subscribe that you can change the world and change the things that you want to change in the world and build the things that you want to build if you only do it in eight hours a day. I'm not saying that you can't have a business and do it at eight hours a day. I'm saying for the level that that my innovation is and what I'm trying to accomplish, it cannot be done at eight hours a day because I have to do things like this. I have to do more posts. I have to hire people. I have to follow up on emails. I have to talk to my assistant, make sure that she's doing, moving the things forward. I have to talk to the other team members. I have to relook at the, the financial statements. I have to go and look at some of the stuff that we're doing for Merlin. I have to push that for like, I'm, as I'm talking about this, I have another email that I have to finish after this because that I didn't get a chance to do that needs to be done. And so, you are always working. You, If you really want to make the changes that you want to see in the world and you really want to innovate and create the things that you want to take, it's going to take more than eight hours a day, right? And so because like, for instance, two hours today, I focused an hour on selling age of radio stuff. The second hour I wanted to focus on talk, going and doing some insurance sell stuff. That's when I got pulled away. I needed to do other things that other team members needed help with. And I love them and they got their stuff done and we move things forward. That doesn't matter. But then I needed to redeviate to go back and do those things. So those things still get done by the end of the day. And if they don't get done by the end of the day, then I'm going to have to tack on more time tomorrow to get those things specifically done because they need to get done because that's how you move the business forward. So the second thing that I would say that's very difficult about being an entrepreneur that you have to be ready for is you're going to have to put fires out. But Along with that, if you can learn to manage your time and you can learn to have that discipline, then you can put the fires out, you can redeviate, and then you can get the work done that you want to do. And again, I'm not saying that you can't like build a business in eight or nine hours a day. It's just like you can only do so much. Like while me and Elon Musk don't agree with certain things from his political opinions, I believe in some of his work ethic where like if you're going to change the entire world, you can't, you have to be super focused, super serious on it, super diligent about it. And it's going to take more than what other people are willing to put into their time. If you put 40 hours a week into something, you can double that productivity by putting another 40 hours a week into it. And if you can rest and manage your time and stay efficient at that, you can do really, really well. And then if you can get other people to have that same mindset, maybe not work the 80 hours a week, but have that same mindset of efficiency and growth and to pushing themselves to accomplish things that no one else else can accomplish then you will accomplish accomplish a great deal. And again, I'm not saying that I'm up there like with Elon Musk as like what, you know, what he's currently doing and what I'm currently doing right now. But like the goals of getting to a place where we're building other businesses and we're working on other things, that's where I'm trying to innovate right now and create my network to grow into those specific places. And that I know is going to take me more than the 60 hours or 70 hours or sometimes 80 hours that I'm working right now, that it's going to be pushing that to the next level. And it's also going to be meaning saying, okay, well, these are the things that I really need to work on. And then making sure that I'm setting the time for those things. Um, and again, when the fires happen, you need to redeviate to those things that you need to do. Um, and then it also means maybe like re-educating people, getting people better education so that, that they can make those decisions that they otherwise would have done for you. And again, today wasn't really that like, it wasn't that bad. It was like just stuff that needed to be answered that I was the only one that could, for the most part, answer some of that. And if I wasn't, then I needed to get in contact with the other people that we could make that decision together. Um, and so that they can move those things forward. Because the other thing is you need to move really fast, but you also need to move really efficient. And so, which leads me to probably the third thing that I would say is one of the hardest things about being an entrepreneur is keeping everything moving at a good pace. One of the things that really frustrates me the most in our businesses and in my business is things move way too slow, but they move too slow because we have so much stuff going on, which will lead me to a different problem here in a minute. <laughs> but but when you have a lot of stuff going on, you need to make sure that you're spending the time either educating the people so that they can start making those decisions better uh, or bringing the people in that know how to already do that stuff to make the decisions. And that's one of the things that's been the hardest, one of the hardest things for me to learn over the years is dealing with that because of the fact that 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 when we first started out, we 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 didn't have capital. 
So we had to grind everything out. So it's always been us working and working and working and working and then realizing that, okay, well, we need to add these other pieces in there so that they can do the other things that either we don't know how to do or they need to do the other things that we shouldn't be doing because we need to be focusing on these things. But then when you get to a different level, you need to realize that maybe those people need to up their skill set. Maybe we need to do other training and then maybe we need to hire other people. And so that's one of the things that is super, super important about as you're starting to build your business and grow your business, that you're finding those other pieces and getting them where they need to be to move forward. So it's not always just you that has to do every single thing. And then as those pieces start taking over more of those tasks, then you can start doing other things that need to be more efficient. And then that's how it kind of grows. And then it starts over again. And then you continue to do that. Which, which again, one of the things that I mentioned in that last in that last piece about things that were really sucking and difficult is that learning that you need to get things off of the ground first in a, in a way in which they can work and sustain themselves. So a lot of the businesses are live and breathe and die with us working. That if we're not putting in the, this extra energy, then the business isn't growing. And so we have been able to to fix a lot of that um, in some of the businesses, but then in the other businesses, it's just not there yet because the business isn't either making enough money to do that thing and we're still grinding it out, uh, or we don't have enough other capital that we can put into that business to get to that place. And so it's very important that it in my opinion, if I could go back and do some of these things over, I the only two businesses, and I love Merlin, and so it's going to suck to say this because I, I do put a lot of time into Merlin more than I would I do in Age of Radio. I would have really focused on on um uh three two hour academy. I would have said no to everything else. I would have done Q Financial a lot more. I would have got my Series 65 a lot sooner. Um probably started doing other types of insurance sooner, which would have led me probably to IUL anyway. Uh and then I would have just focused on Age of Radio and I would have said no to everything else. Uh but and but that was something that I was really, really working on because I felt that I had to say yes because people, and this might sound bad, but I have a skill set that a lot of the other people around me don't have. And I know that sounds bad, uh, but I wanted to say yes so I could help these people because they're my friend and I didn't think they would know how to do it. But again, I that's not my place to make that decision. And that's one of the things that I'm realizing now that if I just would have said no, they would have had to go and do the thing. They would have had to figure it out. And I think a lot of them would have figured that out. But I would have said no to a lot of other stuff. Uh, But I am grateful for where I'm at now. And I'm going to be utilizing some of the resources and things I'm learning from the other businesses and other businesses. So that's very beneficial. But I think when you're starting out, just do one thing. Keep a, a... Keep like a, an innovative journal. I have an innovation journal over here. It has my ideas for the newsletter I want to write. It has the ideas for the space stuff that I want to do. It has the idea of what I'm going to do to uh, work to learn how to do more with venture capital. It has all these great ideas in it. Just keep that, revisit it, reorganize it, get it into like something like Fig Jam also. So it's much more organized than in my flip pad, which is something that I need to do, but I love my flip pads by lectern. Uh, and so I would I would definitely do that And then come back to those and revisit those ideas to move them. The only time that I would say that that isn't a good idea is that if you think you have an idea that could be something that's brand new, kind of like with Merlin. So that's kind of like, I guess I'm being a little bit hypocritical about this uh, and and the Merlin situation is because Merlin create is something brand new in the world that we're doing that no other one else is doing. Okay. And so when you have that type of idea, you might want to jump on that idea. But then if you jump on that idea, it means pushing all of those things down, completely down, and then going all in that other idea if you think that you can get that new innovative thing off the ground. So I guess in that regards, I kind of did that with Merlin. But um, but normally, I wouldn't say do that. I would say focus on your one one project for like three to five years, then do another project, start it, make sure that you have the capital to have the pieces to be able to come in and run it for you and run it with you more efficiently. And that's where I'm trying to get Age of Radio out. And it's slowly starting to happen. Uh, you just got to be the leader in it and push the thing, pieces where you need to push them. The other thing that I will say, the very last thing that I will say, and I'm sure there's all other kinds of stuff. I just wanted to 
kind of, I guess, I think it's important to talk about the things that are really difficult because we we hype things up with business a lot that we're going to make a bunch of money, that you get the freedom, which is great. But when you're really, if you're really actively trying to grow something and change it, it's going to take you tw- as much time, all of your extra time. Don't go into a business to get time back. Go into a business because there's something in the world that you want to create and that you want to see in the world that doesn't currently exist. And you want that to be the thing that feeds your family and future generations. Don't do it because you want to only work four hours a day and get passive income. Uh, I don't think that that will work, at least not in the beginning. It'll work later on when you start getting more money and you can start buying things that give you passive income or pay you dividends, or you can invest in other companies that give you profit. But at the beginning piece of it, you you just are going to have so much stuff that you're going to need to do that in my mind, it doesn't make sense to do it, to do it that way. And with that, as I always say, be thankful, grateful, and kind, and we'll talk to you next time. Bye. You were born in your dying, honey, I'm already crying. Thank you for listening to The Age of Jeremy. If you can share this podcast so we can get in front of more people and give it a rating, just a real rating is fine if your podcatcher allows you. If you think it's a one, it's a one. It'll let me know that I need to do things better. If it's a five, it's a five, and I'll know that I'm doing something right. I would really appreciate it. The opening song was Positive Change by Gaslight Anthem. The closing song was Gardens by Trevor Hall. I'm recording into a Neumann microphone into my Zoom L8 utilizing Steinberg's Cubase and Waves plugins. And one last time, be thankful, grateful, and kind. We'll talk to you soon. Bye.